Chapter 7 today. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham as he was returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham apportioned a tenth of all the spoils, was first of all, by the translation of his name, king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God. He remains a priest perpetually. All right. As a prototype for Christ himself, Melchizedek was both a king and a priest. He both blessed Abraham and received Abraham's tithes. The Levitical priesthood was hereditary, but Melchizedek's was not. His parents and origin are unknown, but that was irrelevant to his priesthood. No record existed of Melchizedek's birth or death. The resemblance to Christ uh, rests upon the way Melchizedek's history is reported in the Old Testament, not upon Melchizedek himself. Melchizedek was not the pre-incarnate Christ, as some believe, but was similar to Christ in that his priesthood was universal. All right, this next section is all about the superiority of the Melchizedek priesthood to the Levitical system. Now observe how great this man was to whom Abraham, the patriarch, gave a tenth of the choicest spoils. And those indeed of the sons of Levi who received the priest's office have commandment in the law to collect a tenth from the people, that is, from their brethren, although these are descended from Abraham. But the one whose genealogy is not traced from them collected a tenth from Abraham and blessed the one who had the promises. But without any dispute, the lesser is blessed by the greater. In this case, mortal men receive tithes, but in that case, one receives them, of whom it is witnessed that he lives on. And, so to speak, through Abraham, even Levi, who received tithes, paid tithes, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Pause. This is all about Melchizedek being in a position of authority over Abraham and his descendant Levi. We're about to see that the inadequacy of the legal and Levitical systems had to be replaced by something better. Verse 11. Now, if perfection was through the Levitical priesthood, for on the basis of it, the people received the law, what further need was there for another priest to arise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be designated according to the order of Aaron or the Levitical system? Verse 12. For when the priesthood is changed, of necessity there takes place a change of law also. For the one concerning whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe from which no one has officiated at the altar. All right, pause. These verses developed from Psalm chapter 110, verse 4, which says, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. God would never introduce a new priesthood if it was not necessary, and he would never introduce an inferior priesthood. The mere mention of the order of Melchizedek shows that God wanted the priesthood to be changed. Under the law of Moses, God strictly commanded that only those from the family of Aaron could serve at the altar in sacrifice. Jesus is not from the family of Aaron or even the tribe of Levi. Jesus' lineage was from the tribe of Judah and had nothing to do with Aaron's priesthood, which was associated with the law of Moses. Therefore, according to the priesthood of Aaron and the law of Moses, Jesus could never be a priest. If he is our high priest, it had to come from another way. For it is evident that our Lord was descended from Judah, a tribe with reference to which Moses spoke nothing concerning priests. And this is clearer still. If another priest arises according to the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become such not on the basis of a law of physical requirement, but according to the power of an indestructible life. For it is attested of him, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Another pause. The Levitical system was replaced by a new priest offering a new sacrifice under a new covenant. Jesus obtained his priesthood not by virtue of the law, but by virtue of his deity. Verse 18. For, on the one hand, there is a setting aside of a former commandment because of its weakness and uselessness, for the law made nothing perfect. And on the other hand, there is a bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. And inasmuch as it was not without an oath, for they indeed became priests without an oath, 
but he with an oath through the one who said to him, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. So much the more also Jesus has become the guarantee of a better covenant. The law did not save anyone. It pointed out people's sins and reason for judgment. It was important and necessary, so people didn't run around reckless and lawless, but it couldn't offer what Jesus could, grace, mercy, and pardon. The former priests, on the one hand, existed in greater numbers because they were prevented by death from continuing. But Jesus, on the other hand, because he continues forever, holds his priesthood permanently. Therefore, he is able also to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Pause. Intercession came from making a petition to a king. Jesus prayed for us then and prays for us now. This should be a tremendous encouragement to anybody who feels like giving up. He has never given up on us. For it was fitting for us to have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens, who does not need daily, like those high priests, to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people, because this he did once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men as high priests who are weak, but the word of the oath, which came after the law, appoints a son, made perfect forever. And there it is, the only priest we need in our lives. He did away with the old system of priests and took the role upon himself because ultimately it all pointed to him. Praise you, Jesus, for doing so. Okay, our saintly snippet for the day is from The Knowledge of the Holy by A.W. Tozer. To meditate on the three persons of the Godhead is to walk in thought through the garden eastward in Eden and to tread on holy ground. Our sincerest effort to grasp the incomprehensible mystery of the Trinity must remain forever futile, and only by deepest reverence can it be saved from actual presumption. Some persons who reject all that they cannot explain have denied that God is a Trinity. Subjecting the Most High to their cold, level-eyed scrutiny, they conclude that it is impossible that he could be both one and three. These forget that their whole life is enshrouded in mystery. They fail to consider that any real explanation of even the simplest phenomenon in nature lies hidden in obscurity and can no more be explained than can the mystery of the Godhead. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for being our great high priest who took away our sins by sacrificing for them once and for all. And now you intercede on our behalf. You represent us in heaven and have provided our way in. How could we ever thank you? We're grateful to be under your new covenant and that the burden of trying to remove our failures through ritual and sacrifice has been fulfilled. As your word states, no amount of sacrifice and good works on our own merit would ever be able to cancel out our sins. Lord, please help us to live with this reality on the forefront of our minds each and every day, to live in a state of gratefulness and appreciation rather than a self-righteous, entitled sense of pride. May we always keep in mind what we bring to the table on behalf of righteousness in your sight. Please keep us humble. Jesus, we love you and thank you for both our earthly and spiritual lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you guys. Appreciate you being here. A lot to chew on again today if you want to go back and, and go over it again. God bless you. Have a wonderful one.